On this built up system the call came back in that we had another high pressure trip on circuit 2. One of the things we noticed was the oil level in the compressor was considerably higher than it should have been. In the manual it specs that the oil needs to be above the lower sight glass but only about halfway on the upper sight glass and we were well above the upper sight glass whereas circuit 1 the compressor was the upper sight glass was only running right at dead center which is where it needed to be in the middle. Keep in mind we'd consistently been running about 28 to 30 degrees of approach on circuit two, whereas circuit one, we were consistently able to do 24, 25 degrees without any trouble. It made sense to me that we've probably got too much oil in the system, and what that can lead to is an oversupply of oil. The oil separator is not able to process that oil out of the refrigerant as efficiently as it needs to because there's so much of it. That extra oil that it can't process out ends up stacking in the condenser and in the evaporator coil and other places. When we start to collect too much oil in the condenser, that oil will then start to form a film on all the tubes and it will block heat transfer and act as an insulator. With a clear hose, we went from the oil drain to the suction line because with the compressor off, the system is equalized inside the compressor to the suction side because of the check valves. When you do a setup like this, what this allows the system to do is the oil is able to go into the hose and come at its equal level because it's hooked up to a different port on the other side, you know, it's, it's able to flow into it and level out. You can see actual level. So if you're not familiar with this, if you need to check oil level on any system, you can use a procedure like this. Now on a lot of systems, like a, a lot of your air cooled, you'll go from say the bottom of the oil separator, for example, or the compressor, you'll go up to a discharge service port to where you can equalize that way. In this particular one, we needed to use the suction side. We did try hooking up to the discharge side and we realized that the check valve was creating some pressure differential. So all we ended up doing was pushing from the high side back into the oil, which was just creating this flow. We weren't able to check level that way because of the pressure differential. So we needed to reroute it over to the suction side instead. One of the things the manual is very clear about though is it wanted this checked with the compressor running. So we went ahead with it off. I had the other circuit running. We drained it down to get just kind of in the general area we knew we wanted to be on the upper side glass. To do that, we ended up getting out about three and a half, almost four gallons worth of oil before we were able to get down into the upper side glass and kind of hit right at or actually it was just below that midpoint where we wanted to be. Once we got the oil level down, I went ahead, switched over the circuits and got compressor two running so that we could then check the level with it running. One of the things that we noticed during that time frame was our oil level kept coming back up, which is what we expected to see. And it, it only confirms my theory is that we had too much oil in the system. It was stacking elsewhere in the system because the oil separator couldn't process the heavy oil load and it was affecting our heat exchange. And we also were able to prove that further by our approach value. After about an hour's worth of runtime, we ended up having to pull just a little bit more oil off. Now we did end up taking just slightly too much. We put just a little bit back in to hit that perfect center point on the upper sight glass. Once we got the oil in the system to level out and start behaving the way we wanted it to, we were able to get that approach down to where we were running 24, 25 degrees unloaded. And with once the compressor kind of started to load up after we were there for a few hours in the of the day started to push in we were maintaining you know top end 26 27 degrees of approach which from where we came from that, that's a really solid improvement that i'm very happy with and i'm okay with those numbers because that also reflects what circuit one has been able to do and it hasn't had any kind of head pressure issues and honestly i thought that was about it but then this happened so as we were trying to let the system run and stabilize and get a good picture as to what the oil was going to do water pump just shuts off. Go over to the drive. Drive has no, no start stop signal coming back to it. It's getting a speed reference but no start stop. As we began to track it down and try to determine just why in the heck is that happening. I let us from tracing the conduit out coming up over all the way down back into the panel and sorting through all of this. It's not a perfect match but we have some schematics to go by that was very useful. Ultimately after tracing everything out we found that in a one convoluted way this is the main relay that's cycling the compressor and the pump. So on L3 or terminal 3 on this relay is doing the pump and on terminal 1 is doing the compressor start stop. So after the pump shut down while the compressor was running, it ended up tripping on a high head pressure which is part of the complaint that they were having was it was tripping routinely but also kind of randomly. With that symptom, I was watching this and the compressor would turn on but heck the pump wasn't turning on immediately. Then I just started flicking the relay and I could thump it. As soon as I thump it, the pump would turn on and it would get 
start stop at the drive and it starts to ramp. Thump it again, it turned back off. Thump it again, it turned back on. But the compressor never cycled and our little LED never turned off, never fluttered, never nothing. We ended up having just a spare relay laying around in the panel, so I swapped them out real quick just to see what happened. Now, that doesn't mean I trust that relay completely, but the symptoms completely stopped. So that was my main question. Was it the relay or was it the base? At the moment, I'm thinking it was the relay, but we were losing our continuity between that terminal three, shutting our drive down, which was leading to head pressure trip. By the way, if you guys haven't yet, you really ought to check out Field Pulse. Michael and the guys can help fix you up, especially if you're a fairly small business or shop or you're trying to develop your uh, service uh, side of your business. This type of software can do a lot to really help you streamline your processes, your billing, your invoicing, everything that you need in order to help expand and grow your business. You shouldn't be doing everything so manual all the time and you shouldn't have to rely on your admin to have such heavy loads in order to get this kind of stuff done. If you really invest in a good automated system, it's gonna help your business grow and thrive and, and this is the type of system that can help get you there. So just go check them out. I really encourage you to look into this. This is going to be good for your business and ultimately carry forward from there. So after swapping the relay out, we were able to run that machine for another hour or so and make sure the oil levels, everything looked like we wanted it to. Didn't have any further issues out of it. Really happy with it. So I think we've got that one figured out and we had two solid diagnoses here. One, we had an efficiency issue that we thought may have been contributing to and it, and it was the high head pressure which was we had way too much oil in the system and the reason I think the oil was there was because when that system starts running high head pressure and this is pretty common for a lot of uh, chillers when you start having head pressure issues you can have some nuisance oil alarms which is what was happening with this machine when you would run and trip on a high head pressure sometimes it would throw some oil alarms as well so I believe what happened was somewhere along the way somebody thought that the oil may have had something to do with it and they started adding oil to the system instead of just going based off of what the manufacturer recommended the oil should be which led to the way too much oil and contributed to hurting our efficiency and their approach and everything else so we fixed the efficiency issue but the second thing was actually that relay so i think the actual cause of the high pressure problems was resolved by changing that relay out and i don't expect them to have any more issues and i told them that you know because it was a relay that was just in the panel i don't know the history behind it or why it was there so if he trips again for any other reason or if there's further issues with that pump let's go ahead and actually purchase a brand new relay put that in there that way we can just remove that doubt that something else could be going on with that relay you know maybe somebody changed it left it in the panel never took it away it works for a week for us and then craps out again who knows so it's been several weeks working on this system in total from day one where we had the high head pressure issues and I adjusted the, the condenser water set points and modified the initial system then came back uh, after the PMs at that point and you know made some further adjustments and worked on the pumps and the pump staging and took care of that we We've been just kind of slowly ongoing tuning this thing in taking it piece by piece as we identify problems resolving them addressing them and then getting the system down the road a little further and then this relay was just purely intermittent it's genuinely one of those things where you just had to be there at the right place at the right time to catch it and if it hadn't just shut the pump down and done it right there in front of me genuinely I had no reason to suspect it and I, and I could have walked away from this thinking it was purely high oil level took care of that walk away jobs done and still get another high pressure trip and walk in just i have no idea what's going on now in reality i was dealing with an intermittent relay by the way i never talk about this kind of stuff but i do have these hvac time hats uh, on my website so if you're ever interested in trying to get one of these they are available if you just go and order one i do need to get me a new one i've had this one for about a year now or more it's 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 a little worn just slightly but these are Richardson brand, which is my preferred brand and, and really excited. I've, I've enjoyed those hats a lot. MTT guys, take care of your family, take care of your spouse, spend the time. We're coming out of summer. Make good of this winter, put that time in with them and just let's, let's recoup for this next summer. I'll catch y'all later.